The intro sequences for Super Mario Galaxy and its sequel have the player locked into a 2D storybook perspective. Normally, it's impossible to die during these because the camera is locked in place and there are no enemies that can hurt Mario. In fact, you can't even pause the game during these sequences. It all seems pretty airtight, right? WRONG! We can actually sort of break the boundaries of the camera by using the power, power of cheats. By moon jumping our way off the screen, we will eventually fly over an invisible wall. But it looks like Nintendo thought ahead, because if you go where you're not supposed to, you'll get pulled back in bounds. That just means we'll have to moon jump even, even harder. harder. Flying through the sky for long enough will get you over yet another invisible barrier, and now if you fall, you DIE! Then the game responds you back at the beginning of the intro and all is well. Oh, but wait a minute. Before we died, we met the Master Luma and we got the spin power. Since we've died and respawned, does that mean we still have it? Huzzah! But what happens when... Oh. Huh. I thought for sure maybe the animation would take longer, or some sort of weird stacking effect would happen, or maybe it would just crash. Weird. Anyway, let's move on, because in reality, we're just getting started. We've clearly seen now that you can die here, but what if you get a game over? Does it just boot you back to the title screen? Is it the same result as dying, and the sequence just starts at the beginning? Let's find out. And can I just say that the pleasant background music being cut off by the piano slam and Mario dying is hilarious? Okay, moment of truth, baby. Uh, what? I'm back here now? Yeah, I think it's safe to say that at this point that I've broken the game quite thoroughly. Further messing around in this part of the game in front of Peach's castle reveals that Bowser ends up doing some pretty funny stuff depending on where you're standing when you hit certain triggers. For example, if you move over here, Bowser will jump up onto the roof of Toadstool Castle and have himself a dance party! And if you're over here when you triggered Bowser's dialogue, he'll just turn completely invisible along with Peach. I'm, uh, I'm not exactly sure what you want me to see, Bowser. I'll tell you what, let's keep going into the first level of the game and mess around there to see what happens. So, as you land on this first planet, the music kicks in to indicate the beginning of a grand adventure. Now normally, you have to hop into a launch star atop this house to get to the second planet, but what if we just flew to the nearest planet instead? As we home in on it, the music suddenly fades out. It's almost as if the orchestra knew what I was doing and did not approve. Silence has never been more awkward. It's also quite jarring to hear all the sound effects so clearly. Oh well, on we go. It seems Nintendo put a trigger around this entire boss planet, so no matter what direction you approach it from, Mario lands on the egg and starts the boss fight. But wait, let's take it a step further and leave the planet in the middle of the fight. Later, loser! Unfortunately, you can escape the boss, but not the boss music. Well, let's see what happens if we take that first launch star now. Oh. Even more awkwardness. The whole planet is invisible. It's likely this planet and maybe a few others get cold out when you land on the boss's planet. I can still find my way, though. Seeing where you're going is overrated anyway. Oh, I died. That's embarrassing. Uh, it looks like dying reverts the music, so that's nice. Uh, well, that doesn't change the fact that we've made a mess of this game completely. Anyway, that's all I've got for this video. Let me know if you want to see more of this, and maybe I'll even bring the boys in on the action, kind of like my first video on Mario Galaxy 2. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>